David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Today I have for you something that I feel is pretty interesting. It is a brand new pen from Conklin in their Mark Twain Crescent Filler series, and that would be the Super Black. What I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of the pen, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Thanks go out to the good folks at Yaffa Brands, the owners and distributors of Conklin for providing this pen for review. Uh, the idea of an ultra black pen has fascinated me for a while. Um, I've been working at incorporating Vanta Black into a pen for a project. Uh, Vanta Black is a pigment which is one of the blackest blacks. It absorbs 99.965% of light. Uh, there is also some other pigments which market themselves as the glowiest glow. I thought it would be cool to incorporate the blackest black and the glowiest glow into the same pen. Uh, but after discussions with a number of experts, apparently Vanta Black does not play nicely with any resin which could be used to create fountain pens. Uh, if you use it just as a coating on the outside of the pen, uh, it isn't especially durable and so it could easily chip off. Uh, there are other problems with it as well. While I still think that it would have made for a very cool looking pen, it wasn't something that could be realistically executed. Okay, I tried. On a side note, uh, I have been working on my next limited edition pen. Uh, look for an announcement around the beginning of uh, July, maybe the middle of July. While I've enjoyed working with Leonardo on my first few projects, uh, this one will be with a different manufacturer. While I will most likely do other projects with Leonardo in the future, I wanted to mix things up a bit. I'm looking forward to sharing more when the time is right. But let's talk about the pen at hand, which comes in this box. Uh, keeping with the theme of the pen, the outer sleeve is rather dark. I'm not sure how much you could actually see here. Inside we have a traditional Conklin box. Uh, inside there is some warranty information. And then also there is some information about Conklin and this particular model. And then we have the pen. This is the Conklin Mark Twain Crescent Filler in Super Black. The pen is made from solid brass. The surface is treated and then coated in this super black material to give it a very matte black appearance. The company says that this coating will absorb over 99% of visible light. Uh, and I will say that the coating gives the surface of the pen almost a rubbery feel to it. It's different than any other pen I can recall. Up close, it kind of reminds me of the Visconti Homo sapiens lava. Uh, we'll have to see how this treatment lasts over time with some wear and tear, but it definitely has a unique feel to it. Uh, let's take a look at the top of the cap. It is rounded. It transitions into the Conklin branded spring-loaded rocker clip. Uh, it has a gunmetal plating, as does the rest of the trim on this pen. There is another version of this pen with rose gold trim, but I almost kind of feel that that defeats the purpose of a super black pen, having it broken up with the rose gold. Uh, if you push on the back of this clip, you can see how it works. Um, I don't find the clip to be stiff, so uh, pressing it on isn't necessarily required if you want to put it onto something with fairly thin material. If the material is thicker, then you'll want to press on the back. The cap is straight, and then at the end, there isn't a traditional cap band, but on one side, it's engraved with the company name, Conklin. Then on the other side, it says Mark Twain. And below that, it has the number of this specific pen. This is a limited edition of 1898 units, 1898 being the year that Conklin was originally founded. There is a medium-sized step down from the cap to the barrel, uh, the barrel tapers down at an even angle, and at the end, it is slightly rounded, significantly less so than the top of the cap. This pen is a crescent filler. Now, during the size comparisons, um, I'll actually show you this uh, transparent version of the pen, so if you're not familiar with how a crescent filler operates, it'll give you a look, good look at what goes on inside this pen. Uh, there is a black plastic ring which rotates, and then there is a little slot in the ring. When that slot lines up with the crescent, you can then press it down, and when it's released, ink is sucked up into the sack inside. The cap twists off with one and a quarter rotations, and underneath there is a stainless steel number six nib. This particular pen is equipped with Conklin's Omniflex nib, but it's also available in extra fine, fine, 
medium, broad, and a 1.1 stub. And here's a look at the plastic feet. The section begins with the flare and angles up before it reaches the threads and then a small step up to the remainder of the barrel. Uh, the section is metal. It's not treated with the super black and I feel that was a good decision. The rubbery feel of the rest of the pen would have felt really odd on the section. Um, I don't find the section to be slippery and the threads aren't sharp if your grip should rest on them. Uh, I do like that the crescent is aligned with the nib so it's straight up when you're using the pen. Uh, it would have been awkward if it was off to the side or even worse if it was facing down rather than up. The cap does post. It does post securely, but I do find that it significantly backweights this pen, throwing off the balance. On top of that, uh, I'm not sure over time with the uh, cap being metal and the metal contact it's going to make here that uh, the metal will damage the exterior treatment of this pen. So I prefer to use this pen unposted. There are multiple entries into the cap thread, so if you want the cap to align with the uh, crescent, then you're going to have to kind of remember the appropriate entry point when capping the pen. The Conklin Mark Twain Crescent Filler Super Black is available at a large number of retailers and sells for $160. The standard Mark Twain model retails for about $160, so this model is a little bit more, which is understandable considering the unique nature of the exterior treatment. Uh, it's an interesting pen. I like the concept of a super black pen. Uh, like I said up front, I'd been toying with the idea myself, so when I heard Conklin had come up with this model, I was slightly intrigued. Um, I like the looks, and while my experience with the Omniflex nib has been rather mixed, we'll see how this particular one performs here in a minute. So now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and then that writing sample. So here we go with some size comparisons for the Conklin Mark Twain Crescent Filler Super Black. Uh, in regard to a couple of other Conklin pens, this was the Endura Deco Crest that I recently reviewed. Uh, and then here it is with an All-American. And then here it is with that translucent version that I was mentioning before. And you can see here that there is a little slot here in the ring and you line that up and you can see that this is connected to a little bar and a sack inside. So you, when you press down, the sack is compressed. When you release it, then the suction will then uh, bring ink into the sack. And that's how that works. And that's what it looks like in comparison to the others. In regard to a couple of other pens, here it is with an Opus 88. Then here it is with a Lamy 2000. This is the stainless steel version. And then here it is with a Lamy Safari. In regard to some uncapped comparisons, uh, here it is with that Deco Crest and the Lamy 2000 and then the Lamy Safari. Okay, here we go with the writing sample for the Conklin. Mark Twain. We'll just call it the Mark Twain Super Black. And this is the Omniflex nib from Conklin. And the ink I'm using, uh, since this is a black pen, I thought I would use one of my favorite black inks, which is Sailor Gentle Black, which is the Kira Guru. This is what the black looks like. It's just a nice solid black. Uh, this is what it looks like in comparison to the Namiki black. And then here it is with the Visconti black. This is what the Sailor bottles look like. 
Uh, I love the Sailor ink. I despise the Sailor bottles, uh, especially if you have a larger nib. Uh, it is really hard to work with these bottles. Even with the little uh, plastic insert that they have in here, uh, I end up finding myself decanting these more often than not just because uh, I'm really not a fan of this bottle design. Okay, and here we go with the rest of the writing sample. I had mentioned before that it had been a bit of a mixed bag with me in regard to this Omniflex nib. Um, so far, I find that this one writes very pleasant. Um, I wouldn't say that it's a huge amount of flex. This is with very little pressure. Now with more, you can get some. Maybe you need to break this nib in just a little bit. Uh, but with light pressure, it pretty much writes like a regular standard medium nib um, in regard to some ink flow find it to be decent and in reverse writing it is a little bit scratchy but it does lay down an extra extra fine line in regard to some fast writing what I really don't see here is something like with the Falcon where with very little effort it adds a lot of um, flair to your writing uh, with this one there's just a little bit more effort involved in order to do so and but the feed keeps up just fine okay so there we go let me get this lined up actually it takes a couple of attempts there we go it's lined up this is the conklin uh, mark twain crescent filler super black um, when i had heard that conklin was coming out with this pen like i had mentioned before i was fascinated to see how it would turn out uh, and i think it turned out very interesting i think that it was well executed on what they were trying to do with this pen so it's well worth checking out uh, until next time thanks for watching and i'll talk to you later